I'm gonna show you how to use this to make this. Now old timers have been using potatoes to smelt gold for years. So I'm gonna show you how they used to do it and so you can do it too. And I'm gonna show you how the old timers used one of these to get rid of the mercury that was on their gold instead of using a retort. First thing you wanna do is cut that thing in half. Take the bigger half and carve out a little cup in it. This is where your gold is gonna be sitting. Don't throw away the other half because you'll need that later on if you want to get rid of that mercury. Now you know I've got other impurities in the gold and I've got a lot of black sand in there too. And we're going to get rid of those today using a potato. Keep in mind that there's a difference between smelting and melting. Smelting looks something like this. Oh, that's dry now. Look at that. All right. That should be good. <laughs> Look at that. All right, we'll go ahead put the gold in there with the flux, fire it up, and pour it into our cone mold. See what we get. And I'm gonna add a little bit of thinner just for fun. Now as a rule, you should only fill this two thirds. I'm a little bit higher because you want to allow for any bubbling or splattering or boiling over. I got a little bit full on this one, but hopefully it'll be all right. you want these to breathe oxygenate so to oxidize out the lead so they have a larger hole on the top just for these larger cupels and I'll make a video about that too and then here's a little tiny cupel you can see the difference yeah always make sure you keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't try to boil over keep that cone rolled up so you don't have thermal shock when you go to dump it in now I wanted to show you that they do make a flux for sulfide ore, you see that? And we got this from Action Mining Services. They're a fantastic company that specialize in these types of fluxes. Did you see how that poured out like water? That's because I put the thinner in there. Always put your lid on and then turn these off and let it cool down slowly. If you leave the lid off, it could get too cold too fast and start cracking and fracturing. Now you see where this is cracked and fractured? That's why you gotta be careful with it. Some guys like to put one of these over the top while it's cooling because that'll fracture and that's glass. You don't wanna get that in your eye. Oh, look at that. Now that is a beautiful bead of gold. And of course, melting, you're just bringing it up to about 2000 degrees Fahrenheit and melting the gold. Now, after you mine the gold out, you have to concentrate it. And that could mean using a shaker table, a spiral bowl, or a wash plant. Piece of gold right there. And there's an, oh, right there. Look at that. Are you seeing this? Now, once you've got your gold concentrated and you want to ship it off to a refinery, I strongly suggest that you smelt it down and get it as pure as possible. That way you'll have a better idea of what kind of return you're going to get from the refinery because they're only going to pay you 94 to 96% spot, depending on which one you use. Now we like going through Midwest refinery and I'll leave a link down below, but it's always a good idea to keep it refined into small buttons. That way, if there's a financial crash, you can use it as currency. The first step to using this in a refining process is you have to get a layer of carbon on the outside of this. We're going to use magnets gas to do that and to remove the impurities we're going to be using borax and Hank Chapman flux
Now we started off with three grams and now we have 2.7. Now if you've got amalgam, which is basically gold and mercury together, there's a way to get rid of that mercury safely. Once again, take your potato, cut it right down the middle, and then carve out a little pocket for your amalgam. Put your amalgam in the very middle Take the two halves. Now in the old days, the old timers would wrap it up with wire, but we're gonna wrap ours up with tin foil. Just like making a baked potato. And then you just throw it in the fire for about 15, 20 minutes. Just like that. Now the nice thing about doing it this way is that if there's any vapors coming off that mercury, it's gonna get trapped inside that potato. The downside is, unlike using a retort, you're gonna lose all your mercury because it's not gonna condense back into a liquid. But if you chamois out your mercury properly, you're not gonna lose that much mercury anyway. You're gonna need a whole bunch of stainless steel balls to put in that rock tumbler, see that? About one inch and a three quarter inch, about 10 and 10 of each. You're gonna need some mercury. When you get your mercury, Make sure you store it in glass, not aluminum. Never put mercury in aluminum. And always store it with water. Are you hearing me? You always keep your mercury under water. Always. Even when you're working with it, panning with it, everything. You never let it get exposed. And then you're gonna need some lye. I like this stuff. I got this at Ace Hardware. It's 100% lye. And lye is also known as sodium hydroxide and caustic soda. But you want 100% because that'll clean the gold really, really well. And like I said, if you can't do that, then get some of these really powerful uh, clog drainers. The last step is the recovery of the gold out of the amalgam. Remember I told you when gold and mercury come together, they make an amalgam. It's like a ball and it's got mercury all over it. This is a retort, okay? We're gonna be retorting. All that means is I'm gonna be heating up the mercury and the gold, the amalgam, inside of this little vessel chamber. And then what happens is, is the vapors go through this water jacket this is going to be filled with water and then it's going to come out the tail the tail section into a small pan and it's going to be recondensed so this is like a small still and you're going to dump the concentrates into the drum then i'm going to take my my 20 balls that i got right here dump them in there and you better be real careful with this you're going to take a, a tablespoon of this and dump it in there and that's about a tablespoon and then take it over to your tumbler. Now that you let that thing tumble for about two or three hours, what you're gonna do is you're gonna drain off all that nasty lye that was in there. And then you're gonna put in fresh water. Now you can't put the mercury straight in with the lye and tumble it that way. And a lot of guys do that. It does work, it is very effective. But I like to rinse it out and get some fresh water in there before I put my mercury in it. I think it just helps a little bit, but it'll work either way. When you get your mercury, you're going to always want to work over what? Water. And then you just dump it in. So I'm going to dump my mercury straight from here right into there. See that? I'm going to put the lid back on and I'm going to tumble it for about an hour and a half. After letting that tumble for about an hour and a half, you're going to open that bad boy up and I'm going to show you how to get the amalgam away from all that other nasty black sand that has nothing in it. All right, I'm gonna drain some of my water off into here. See how nasty that is? Gotta get all my steel balls out of there now. I'm gonna wash these off. Go ahead and get my steel balls in there. All right, I got a whole bunch of black sands and mercury left in there. Put some more water in there, one more time, clean it out. There we go. If you're working with a lot of material and a lot of mercury, the best way to do this is to pan a little at a time. And you're gonna need one of these, nice and gentle. I can already see that mercury. See that mercury trying to come out of there? I don't know if you can see that. See that, where it's already trying to come out? Now when you go to suck this out, remember, tilt it up. Don't go like this, because the mercury will come out. So you're gonna suck it up, tilt it up this way, go over into your glass jar, just like that. That nice chunky amalgam. You're gonna take your chamois, remember I, I told you you need a chamois, because I like to stretch it over something like this, see that? Now I'll take all my mercury, and I'll pour it in there like that. 
just like that. Make sure you got gloves on, that's really important. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze that mercury right through that chamois. And I'm gonna clean the mercury and I'm gonna get my amalgam. See that mercury coming out? Right there, see that? Just keep on squeezing it, tighter and tighter. All right, I think that's it. Let's see what we got. I can feel something in there. Take a look at that. Oh, right there, look at that. Look at that, see that? Nice ball of amalgam, you see that? Ooh, isn't that pretty? All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put him in there like that. There we go, I think I got them all. All right, and that's our amalgam right there. I don't know if you can see all those little balls of amalgam in there. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the different ways of getting the gold out of the amalgam. The way that you can get your mercury off your gold, there's several ways you can do it. And like I told you earlier, you can use nitric acid, and that's the fastest and, and easiest way, or you can use one of these guys here. This is called a retort. You got vented and you got non-vented. Vented just means that if there's a pressure drop inside of here for whatever reason, it allows that pressure to come out the side. Non-vented, you could probably suck water up this tube, and if it gets in there, it's gonna explode. Now there's actually a way to charge your mercury. There's actually two ways to do it. One way is to add sodium to it, which is a little bit dicey. And the other way is to cathode and an anode in a cup. And then you're going to put some lye in there. And you're going to put a 9 volt battery on that. And you put your mercury in there. That's going to supercharge that mercury. And when it's supercharged, it's going to attack that gold like nobody's business. All right, so the amalgam goes in here. Now, I see a lot of guys, they'll pour a whole bunch of mercury in this thing. And of course, it's not gonna boil it out. So you wanna make sure that you your amalgam ball is completely void as much mercury as possible. I put a little aluminum cup in there, and then I'll put my amalgam in here, and then I'll put that in here. And I like to use a little bit of putty on here too, and it'll seal the threads, that way I'm okay. And then of course, we added these tubes in here to create a uh, recirculating water jacket in there. That way it stays nice and cool in there. On these non-vented systems, look at this. It comes down, you want a little cup down here at the very end to capture the mercury. You got this rubber tube hanging out the end here. Now, I like to put a piece of either cheesecloth or some kind of cloth taped to the end, and then that sits in, inside of the water here. And I don't like to have this tube submerged in there because if there's a drop of pressure, it'll suck the water up this tube, and that can be dangerous. Put the amalgam right in there like that. Now I'll put him right on the end like that. All right, now anytime you do this, you make sure you're outside in a well-ventilated area. What you're gonna do is you're gonna let that air cool down and then take it off. And then you can take out your little aluminum, which looks like a cup, see that? And I put him down there in the water, shake him out. A lot of people out there think that mercury is dangerous. But in actuality, it's not that dangerous. It's the vapors that are dangerous. Old timers have been using it for years, but lately it's gotten a bad rap. Now there's a lot of YouTubers out there that have gone to great lengths to prove to you that it's safe. And one of my favorites is Cody's Lab. I'll leave a link down below to one of the videos he did on mercury and how safe it is and the unique qualities about it too. Oh yeah, that looks like it's just about done. All right, let's have a look at that. Yeah, looks about right. All right, let's cut this thing open and see what's inside. There she is. Let's clean it up and see what it looks like. And that's what's referred to as sponge gold. And then from there, you can smelt this down into a button and you're good to go. 
Now, if you'd like to do your own smelting without all the hassle, I highly recommend these little quick kilns right here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link down below where you can get them. Mention our name and they're gonna give you a discount. When you buy the kit, it'll come with a crucible, tongs, and flux. This is one of the fastest and cheapest ways if you wanna do your own smelting. Let them know we sent you and they're gonna give you a discount. Oh, yeah. Now, if any of you out there have got stories about smelting or using mercury, I'd really like to hear it. And I'm sure a lot of people out there in the audience would like to hear it. So let's start up a conversation. Leave me a comment down below so everybody can be educated by everybody else's experiences. Now, if you like today's video, you go ahead and smash that like button. And if you guys want to learn more about gold, and especially the geology of gold, I'm going to leave a video right here. You're really going to enjoy this if you haven't seen it already. Leave me a comment on that as well, and I'll see you on the next video.